So I'd like to thank all of you for being here for this virtual tour of uh, out-of-the-box manufacturing. I'm Kirk Davis, uh, the Executive Director of CAMPS, the Center for Advanced Manufacturing Peace and Sound, and I want to thank all of you for being here. So Brian and Mike, I'm going to turn the time over to you, and we're going to we're going to let you take us on this tour. Sounds good. Hey, thanks thanks for being here, everybody, and thanks for setting it up, Kirk. Um, CAMPS has always been a great organization for us. Uh, to participate um, in, and um, and uh, we, we, we are looking forward to showing you the shop. Uh, I'm Brian Trumbull. I'm sales manager here at Out of the Box Manufacturing. My focus is on volume production. And Mike Lopez, I'm typically focusing on prototype and quick turnaround. Anybody uh, looking for something yesterday, it's kind of uh, my forte. Yeah, so as uh, Allison had mentioned before, the company uh, was founded in 2008. And I think we've been in this facility since uh, 2014. Uh, we're about 17,500 square feet, 15,000 square feet out of the shop. Uh, we uh, focus uh, primarily on printed circuit board assembly, which is the full printed circuit board with all the components on it. So we'll take a raw bare board, right? And populate it with the components for customers. That's about 75%, 80% of our business. But we also do uh, box build, and electromechanical assembly and a lot of other stuff that we'll show you out there on the floor. Uh, and we do turnkey and consigned. So for anybody that is not familiar with that, uh, consigned is the customer will hand us a kit and we will build it for them for their documentation or turnkey will go out and buy everything and, outs and source it for them and hand them the finished assembly. Um, we've got about 58 employees, I think, right now. And um, we're, we're running one shift, so we've got room to grow. And um, you know, what else am I missing here? Uh, Other than not spoiling the surprise out on the floor. <laughs> I think we're covering it right now. Uh, Allison gave an intro earlier before the record button was pushed about how Out of the Box started. So mm -hmm. we've been uh, in business since 2008. If uh, everybody, if some people missed that part, been in business since 2008, moved into this building here, uh, what, about 2014? Mm -hmm. Something like that, Allison. Um, and so I think I started almost six, five and a half, six years ago. Brian, you started when? Almost five. Almost five years ago. Okay. Yeah. And I so, thought they were smarter than that. I'm still here, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they haven't kicked this out just yet. Yeah. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, uh, this company is very family oriented and very employee oriented. Um, so it's always a, uh, an environment where you can kind of speak your mind and uh, share ideas. So that's, that's kind of, I think, the, the core model for, for us here. Uh, we are a build to print shop, I wanna mention that. We don't do any design work here. Uh, we have manufacturing engineers that uh, will help support customers in developing the best way to manufacture their product for uh, most cost effectiveness, repeatability, uh, quality, and all that good stuff. So um, if, if anybody doesn't have any questions right now, maybe we should just uh, hit the floor. Sure. I think that's great. And if I if I see any questions in the chat, I'll ask them for you. Thank you. Sounds good. I'm going to put some earbuds in so I can hear. Uh, Mike's going to kill the camera real quick so he can do some jostling around. And we'll see you in about 30 seconds out on the floor. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me while you're jostling around a little bit, uh, but Matt Smith asked a question about uh, you. Hopefully, one of the things you'll talk about are the specific industries that you guys serve. So, Allison, do you want to address that while they're while we're waiting for them? <clears throat> You're still on mute. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Kirk I had somebody come into my yeah. office. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt is asking if there's any specific industries that you focus on. Yes, thank you. Uh, so we have a couple of quality certifications that we um, adhere to that allow us to specifically build products for the aerospace and the medical community. 
Um, so we, we service uh, those folks. Uh, we also have an ITAR registration, meaning that we can build products for uh, military applications. Um, beyond that, we're pretty well, uh, pretty diverse. Uh, we can, our other customers, uh, we've done LED lighting circuit boards. Um, we've done uh, a commercial and industrial applications. Um, so one of the benefits to being in the business that we are in is that just about everything these days with, you know, industrial IoT and uh, that sort of thing has a circuit board or some sort of um, electronics in it. So uh, really, uh, and size of circuit board is really variable as well. So, you know, some boards that we produce are really big. Other boards that we produce are really, really small. Um, mm -hmm. Seen circuit boards manufactured um, that were actually uh, implants for fish, you know, for like uh, game tracking and that sort of thing. And those can be really, oh, wow. really tiny. So, uh, yeah, kind of all over the board. We're lucky that we've got a lot of opportunity to yeah. um, participate in a lot of industries. So now, um, uh, Darren just asked real quick, is there any assemblies that you won't do or can't support necessarily? There. Yeah, we have some restrictions on size. I mentioned size, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really pretty up there. Um, and Mike and uh, Trumbull can probably answer specifically to the size, but I think we can do is it like uh, 24 inches uh, uh, square, but beyond that, some applications uh, that, that would be too large. Uh, we also don't participate in anything that's flight critical or life critical right now. Okay. Uh, we just made the business decision that um, we're gonna we're not going to participate in those sort of applications right now. Well, that's a great answer. Thank you. So, Mike and Brian, you guys ready for part two? Looks like we got them on. Uh... There we go. Now we're now we're off mute. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, this is. The shop here, and we're based, like I said, we're about 17,500 square feet in total. It's 15,000 square feet out here. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is that um, we do uh, a prototype. We didn't really touch on that. I wanted to do that out here. We do quick turn prototype and we do uh, volume production. So quick turn prototype means somebody could walk in the door uh, this morning with a uh, consigned kit and theoretically have it out the door uh, same day, the next day, three, two, three, five, ten, fifteen 15 days, depending on how fast they need it. So uh, out of the box is very nimble in that regard. Uh, volume production, we're a low to medium volume house, uh, high mix. So uh, a lot of people ask questions about, uh, well, how many boards can you do? And my answer back is it depends how big it is. So uh, for example, on the, pro on the volume line that we'll show you, uh, we might be doing 20 boards that have 6,800 parts on them, uh, BGAs all over both sides, which is a, a very complex uh, component to place. Uh, the board might be a quarter inch thick, 20 by 20 inches in, in dimensions. Um, or we might be doing about 1,000 or 2,000 boards that uh, might be about two inches in the round, panelized very nicely, 25 parts, single-sided. Both of those might even just take about the same amount of time. So it's kind of hard to say how many boards can you do. Can you do it depends on the, the uh, quantity of the uh, the parts it's a matter of time uh, let's go what we'll do we'll take a look at the prototype line first i hope my uh my camera skills are not so shaky for you it's looking pretty good it's as good as you can do i think in this type of environment so good job yeah okay so this is our prototype line here, and roughly at any given month, this is about 50% of our revenue. Um, we support uh, product development companies uh, in, the, in the area, mostly up and down the, the I-5 corridor and, and Puget Sound area. Um, uh, independent engineers that might be working in their garage. Uh, they, they, the interesting thing about this line here is it'll take cut tape. So if you're familiar, I didn't have any media here, but uh, you might, the, the, the real parts might cost you $5,000 and might be 10,000 pieces and about that big. If you don't want to buy all those, you don't have to, you can buy a piece of cut tape. And then uh, the machine over here, which is a MyData or actually a Micronics now, they rename themselves. Uh, the feeders will accept cut tape. So you don't have to invest all that money in a, uh, in a uh, small run like that. Um, so we do, a, we do a ton of different uh, types of builds here, whether they're uh, one board, 20 boards, things like that, flex circuits, rigid flex, uh, all, all up and down, all up and down the gamut there. Um, 
the way it works for the people who are really not familiar with uh, EMS in general or electric, uh, electronic um, manufacturing services, we've got a screen printer here. And what this does, it's, it's basically like you're, uh, you're still screening a t-shirt, except you've got a stencil in here, which is this, uh, this device right here. And it's got holes that made up with the apertures or the pads on the uh, printed circuit board. So what it does is it's going to silk screen the paste onto the board. It's not doing any soldering. It's not placing any components. That's for the next step here. Next step is uh, a pick and place machine. This is one of our new pick and place machines right here. And uh, this is a, a, has the ability to place down to uh, 01, 005 uh, size components, which are very small. Um, the next step after it places the components is still not doing any soldering. Uh, it might, we might have to do a secondary operation here uh, to place more components on this pick and place machine. A little bit different than the other one. This is a, this is a Mitronic. The assembly's in there. The speaker needs to be closer to the phone is what somebody's just commented. Oh, okay. We'll just speak up. So pick and place machine here. She's changing it out right now or, or uh, modifying the build. The next step is it's going to feed through the conveyor here and go into the uh, oven and that's where the soldering actually happens. It's going to go through and it's going to start to heat up the board slowly so it doesn't shock it. It's going to do some uh, uh, melting of the uh, alloys of the uh, solder paste and then it's going to cool off and come out the other end and you're going to have your surface mount which are components that sit flush to the board. Your surface mount components are going to be uh, uh, soldered on. So at this point the, the rest of the shop for these builds is going to be a, a shared asset, so to speak. So we're going to go over to the production line. I'll show you a little bit um, uh, of what happens over there and why that one's different than this line. So while you're headed that direction, and Mike, maybe you saw this, but they asked the question, how do you solder application for uh, applications for quick turn for quick turn prototypes? What was the question? How, how does our solder how application work? Soldering application for quick quick turn uh, prototypes. Is that, um, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the question means exactly, but uh, how, how are you handling prototypes in terms of soldering? Oh, machine, machine placement just through our screen printer, uh, through our pick and place machines and down the line. Um, some shops do a lot of hand builds uh, where they're hand soldering all of the components. Uh, this shop, we prefer to do mostly all machine placed components. Okay. If, if that's not the right if answer. If that's not the right let's, answer. Let's grab that when we get back in. Okay. Okay, well. Hopefully, okay. hopefully that answers your question. So yeah. All right. So this is our volume line here. It's a little bit different, um, little bit different uh, platform. Uh, this, these are Juki. Uh, so it's a screen printer. The same thing's happening here. Uh, the, uh, the printed circuit board, just the bare board is going to feed in here. The uh, screen printer is going to screen print the solder paste onto the, uh, the pads of the board. And it's uh, got a board right here that's getting ready on the next step to go in to get parts placed. So we've got three, we've got three pick and place machines in line here, and that's where the volume comes into play. So once you, once you can, this one said, this machine said, and then the third machine said, that's where the volume starts to come in because they balance the engineers balance it so that one machine is not a uh, not a uh, bottleneck for the other one. So same same deal at this point though. Um, one thing I, I missed here is these are the feeders. This is not loaded, but these are the feeders for a volume line. These only take reels. So this is where you invest a lot of money in uh, uh, all the components for larger volume stuff. This this line will not take cut tape at all. Next step is the same thing. You're going to go through the reflow oven. Same thing here. You've got your temperatures. The temperature's going to rise. It's going to uh, solidify that solder paste and uh, cool it down. And you got your your surface mount components placed on the board. So at this point, you've got your surface mount components placed. If it's a two-sided board, it's going to go through the same process. But first, it's going to go through ALI. So this is a 3D AOI, and what AOI stands for is Automated Optical Inspection. And what that does is it basically takes a picture of every component on the board and ensures that there's a component where there should be. 
it's in the right orientation, it's in the right location, it's the right part number itself, uh, and um, and it also will inspect the uh, solder ability or the fillet. So what it'll tell you is that if you have some ins insufficient solders and things like that. Uh, this is a huge uh, quality step in the, the EMS process because if you've got parts that are being put on backwards and you're running a thousand boards, you want to know it, you want to know it right now up front the first article so the operator can feed it back up the line and say, hey, stop what you're doing. I'm, this is what I'm seeing. So we've run 100% uh, production through the AOI and we will try to get away with any uh, prototype uh, pro uh, projects we can through AOI. But if it's a one to three day turn, the odds are we're not going to have time to program it because this will take a little bit of time to program. I'm going to stop here just in case anybody's got any questions. Yeah, and Kirk, any, any questions come up that we can help answer right now? Or are, are, is Brian speaking loud enough? And uh, Yeah, we can hear you. So that's really good. And Allison's been really good to answer the questions that are coming up in the chat. So Thank that's you, been good. Allison. Yeah. <laughs> teamwork, teamwork. No, you guys are doing All right. great. I, I thought it was fascinating. All right, uh, next step in the process is uh, uh, 3D x-ray. Tristan, our quality uh, manager. We got Tristan here, and he's uh, he's our quality manager. He's checking out a uh, board. This uh, this X-ray machine will do CT scans as well, which is basically a 3D model. So if we're looking right here on this component. We found that there's a little. Bit of, so if you look at this component right here, we notice that there's a little bit of bridging. So we need to go review our placement pressure and review our stencil to see if maybe we're putting down too much paste. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Let's look inside the window here. Yeah. Uh -huh. here. I, I see a, I see a nice glare. Can you do a little dance for us, Brian? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then you can take this and do a 3D image and spin it around and Yeah, basically go through the layers and look for any fractures, any little tiny details that the normal 3D X-ray is just not gonna give us. So we can create a full 3D model of any component on here. Perfect. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you. So now you got your surface mount components placed. You've ensured that they're placed correctly. They're in the right spot, all that good stuff. Uh, some of the components that need to be x-rayed that you cannot uh, ensure proper fillet. Uh, we go through the x-ray or uh, components like uh, DGAs where you can't see the, uh, the uh, solder at all and to inspect to it. That's why we use the, uh, the x-ray here. So the next step in the process is going to be through hole. I'm going to take my glasses off because it keeps fogging. <laughs> so this is through hole. Uh, through hole is basically uh, components that um, they have leads and they'll they'll go through the board. So uh, I'll just show you these here. So these, these components here have been prepped. Leads are bent, they're cut, all that good stuff. So they're ready for the operator to take these boards populated with these components here. Uh, they don't have a drawing, there's a drawing up here. Don't get too close because you don't see names. But um, that's actually a schematic. But uh, what they'll do is every operator in the shop has their own um, electronic documentation that they'll, uh, they'll, they'll work for. So it's always going to be the latest documentation. If for some reason there's a change to the documentation, they're going to quarantine or pull the, um, the existing documentation until it gets updated. So we're not building to the uh, previous rev. Next step after they put all the parts into the uh, board, they haven't soldered anything here yet. We're going to go what's called uh, selected solder. And unfortunately, we don't have it running right now. But uh, this one here is uh, leaded. And this one over here is lead free. And what this does, instead of doing a wave solder and soldering, brushing against the bottom of those leads that are sticking through the board, it's going to come up and uh, pogo and solder, or it's going to drag and solder. And it's, a, it's kind of a, a huge uh, bottleneck saver in uh, some of the assemblies we do. We do we do very high tech stuff. We do some legacy stuff. And legacy stuff means there's probably big, bulky old transformers with big leads and things like that on it. So we've also got a solder line. These are just the solder line right here. Uh, we've got on the, on the left side of me, um, we've got. Um, people that are usually working on the prototype builds. And then this side here, they focus on the volume production. 
But what's nice is they're all cross-trained. They all have their electronic documentation in front of them. When there's a large order that comes in, they can, they can mix and match and do what they need to do. The flow comes this way. And we have a visual inspection on each side. And then since we do a ton of uh, prototype stuff, there's always going to be some, uh, some touch-up and uh, kind of monkeying around. Um, we'll do the touch-up and the rework that tends to happen on this side. One of the other things I hadn't mentioned yet is we do DFM, which is designed for manufacturability. So what we'll do, we do a FAI for everything we build. And if there are uh, issues along the way, let's say the pad, the component doesn't fit the same geometry as the pad, we'll get a hold of the customer and say, hey, this is an issue. We think we can get it to fit. It's a prototype anyway. Uh, we'll work it out with the customer. At the end of the day, we'll mark all those things down. Uh, and then we'll, we'll hand it to the customer. The customer can do whatever they want with it. It's just what we want to do is comb through that assembly, uh, talk about panelization uh, for optimizing the, uh, the build, uh, cost effectiveness and things like that. And if there's an alternate part that was uh, provided or a deviation from the original documentation, that'll be noted so the customer knows what they have. And if they know if they want to make some changes on the next revision, they've got all the notes in front of them to do whatever they want to do with that. Uh, the next step here is, uh, let's just let's hit over here real quick. We've got a couple other capabilities where we do uh, conformal coating. So we do conformal coating, which uh, if anybody is not familiar with that, uh, you basically clear coating a board. Uh, if it's going to be not in direct contact with uh, moisture or dust or dirt, but you know, out in the environment, maybe in one of those gray boxes hanging on top of a, 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 a telephone pole, uh, they may want it, uh, the condensation to stay off of the board. So they'll have a conformal coat the board. Uh, we also do a fair amount of potting, which in this case, um, you're, you're taking the assembly after you've tested the electronics and you encase it in uh, plastic or silicone and it can be in direct contact with uh, things like that. We do a, a bunch of uh, builds for uh, valve actuators for ships like Nimitz class carriers. And what they do is they're, they're in contact with salt water, uh, diesel, hydraulic uh, fuel or fluid. Um, dust and dirt, all that kind of stuff. So they need that whole uh, enclosure in case. We've also got aqueous wash. Uh, looks like a huge dishwasher, it kind of is, um, but it's got all the uh, DI uh, filtration uh, built into it. Uh, some customers want their boards washed, especially if they're gonna be conformal coated, uh, things like that. Um, next step, we're gonna go over here. We, like I said, we also do a fair amount of electromechanical assembly and what that is, we'll build a printed circuit board and then the customer says, hey, take it to the next level and put it in the enclosure for me. So we built we built all these uh, circuit boards here. They've wired them up, they've tested them. Now they're gonna find themselves in an enclosure like this. This is gonna get a quick test to make sure it works properly. And then it's gonna go over and it's gonna get potted. It's gonna get filled up with plastic on the inside. So the only thing that's gonna be accessible is the contacts on the outside. We also use this cell for um, uh, a lot of prototype stuff as well. It's kind of a universal cell. Uh, prototype people might say, hey, I want you to do the full box build and I want you to make any notes of uh, issues you find along the way. In some cases, it might be the enclosures, uh, as small as they may be or as large as they may be, might, might have an issue or there's a better way to uh, assemble the product that's going to be faster, cheaper, and more cost effective. We also do tests. Uh, we would love to test everything that we build. Um, but uh, when, we're, when we're doing as many prototypes as we uh, do here, uh, the opportunity is not there for test. That usually goes back to the engineer to poke and prod and, and things like that. We do a ton of rework too. We're also a service and repair facility. So people may send us boards that need VGAs rework, uh, boards uh, trouble shot, things like that. Or maybe they just need some, a trace cut and a new component added. Uh, we do a fair amount of that. Um, the tests that we do are functional type tests. So an old one like this uh, supplied by the customer and there's a fair amount of other ones around here too uh, that are supplied by the customer. We do have the capability to do ICT, but we're really not in that ballpark right now where um, a lot of people are doing high, high volume that they want to spend 10 grand on a test mixture. Um, so they typically, we, if, they, if they get to that level, they typically want to go offshore and uh, out of the box will help them transition. That's, tribal knowledge, all that good stuff. All we want to do is help the customers succeed from uh, uh, the product idea through manufacturing. Uh, next thing, uh, let's, uh, let's head over here and look at the part counter. Great. So this 
our materials cage right here. We do, again, what I, uh, I think I've mentioned before, we do turnkey and consign, whatever the customer wants. Turnkey is they'll buy, we'll buy all the parts for them and then we'll provide the, uh, the boards to them completely assembled or they'll give us a kit and then we audit the kit and send it out on the line and build it for them. They'll, they'll buy the parts. And so there's some, consigned is a different animal. Um, everybody needs to be on the same page. We need overage on small parts. We call them popcorn parts, you know, very small parts. The machine's gonna toss a couple of those out uh, or you're gonna lose a couple while you're feeding the reel. So one thing we actually invested in, I think it's a little over a year ago now, is uh, another x-ray machine, but this is, this is an x-ray part counter. And I think this is, uh, this is probably one of the best uh, pieces of equipment we, we've gotten lately. There's so, a plug. So let's, um, let's, uh, let's imagine that um, you've got a, a board, a build that the customer gave you consigned for a thousand boards. And we're gonna run them through the volume line we just looked at. Um, you pick up a reel that says 10,000 parts. You only need 8,800. It's kind of impossible to count those small, small parts and ensure that you have enough parts. Well, back in the day, you would use a reel counter and that wasn't as actually accurate or as fast. So in this case, we use a 3D, uh, or not 3D, but an X-ray machine here that uh, Kanan's gonna show you that's gonna count the parts in about eight to 10 seconds and tell you exactly what you have. So yeah, here's the cut tape. We'll place it in there, push the button there. Show the screen now. We had a count of 255 pieces. Each circle. Uh, makes another that counted a piece. Pack is 225. We counted 225. We have a good count. Another, another thing we can do with this is we can offer uh, reverse audits. So some of our customers um, may may not have the right tools to do that. Um, they may take the kit back. They may go away for a couple of months and then they're just gonna grab that kit and bring it back to us. Well, it's kind of nice to know if you have enough parts there. So what this will also do is print you a label that tells you who the operator is that scanned it, what date they scanned, and how many components there are. So that's a service we can offer as well as to do reverse audits for folks. Let's uh, sneak through here. I'd say the most people who use that is product development firms, some OEMs. Whenever we tell somebody that we've got an X-ray in our <laughs> facility that counts components, Eyebrows start lifting, definitely. So out of the box, um, we've, uh, it's kind of exciting for us. So we've uh, worked with this one customer for probably four and a half years now to get them to a point to where their uh, medical device uh, is, um, it's a fitness device actually, but it's 1345. And uh, we, we do full, full kit packaging out the door. So we build the PCBAs, we put them in the uh, in enclosures, uh, cable them up, we test them out. We have to keep a device history record since it's a uh, medical device. And then we put it in a box. I have to log all the serial numbers, track them all, all that good stuff. We shrink wrap it and it's out the door. Uh, so right now, this is the cell that we've started and it's just about ready to kick off. We shipped our first um, 18 units, I think it is, that found itself in the customer's hands. And uh, we're looking to do uh, probably a few hundred more at least before the end of the year. So pretty exciting for us. Once this cell is completely up and running, all that documentation on the wall is going to be gone, and it's going to be in an electronic format, and it's going to be a U-shape where the, where the product goes in as a PCBA, and it comes out as a unit. I know some people are zooming in on that right now. Right. right. We also do a lot of other uh, projects with customers, so some of Mike's uh, accounts. Uh, have ongoing projects, so we can't zoom in here real close, but this is kind of where we put customers that um, need to stay on on, on site. Uh, maybe they're doing testing, maybe they're working uh, with somebody remotely to uh, work through some issues and things like that. Maybe they're waiting for PCBAs to come right off the line so they can do whatever they need to do software-wise, test-wise. We'll set them up here and we'll leave them alone. One of the latest capabilities, actually, I guess latest is probably about a year and a half old now, is uh, we set up a cable and harness shop. So uh, we didn't do cables and harnesses before, we outsourced that, but it came to a point to where 
you know, you find yourself with, uh, you know, say $200,000 of material and labor invested in some assemblies out on the floor and you're waiting for a pigtail wire harness that costs $1.50. So um, that, that got a little annoying. So uh, a year before last, uh, the owner, Chad, went to uh, the big manufacturing show and invested in some uh, uh, pretty decent equipment to do some uh, uh, wire harnesses and, and cables. So we've actually uh, started doing uh, ITAR stuff as well and stuff that's uh, uh, for military. So that's kind of exciting for us. It's a new, uh, a new segment for our business. Almost done. So these are all the stencils that we, we have for customers. Um, so ongoing jobs, maybe some of them uh, we're waiting to see if they're going to rev. But these are all the stencils we keep for the customers until they tell us otherwise. We also do, uh, I mentioned uh, DFM, Design for Manufacturability, and uh, things like that. We will take on kits that, um, I, I've mentioned panelization, and if anybody has questions about that, I can show you what that means when we get back to the conference room. But uh, I know there's a couple of uh, contract manufacturing people or old uh, contract manufacturing people on the, on the call right now, uh, and they can attest that uh, when you get a customer that has a weird shape board, round, uh, rectangle, whatever it is, triangle. Um, they go have it built at a board shop and then the board shop depanelizes it and sends them all to you single up. Uh, number one, cost went up. Number two, you're probably gonna have to figure out how the machine is going to hold that um, board while it travels down the conveyor. So a lot of things that we do is we use lasers for certain tools. We've got a, we've got a laser we bought for certain things like that. And we've also got the, uh, over here we've got the 3d printer so with a 3d printer we do a lot of fixtures for folks so we can actually manage the uh, to, the bills for them and uh, the other funny thing is we do uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of tools that we need um, feeders uh, the trolleys things like that well there's some uh, real holders I think that, that is that goes with a new piece of equipment that uh, I think they're six to eight hundred dollars well, our quality guy just uses our 3D printer and we print them and save a ton of money doing that. So that's pretty cool. It's a, it's, we, we use this for all kinds of stuff. He also made my son a, a, a little plastic rabbit. Don't tell the owner. Don't tell the owner. So we're gonna stop right here. We're basically, we're done with the tour. Uh, if anybody has any questions right now before we walk out or maybe you just wait until we get back in the conference room. I saw somebody just pop yeah, up with a question. Yeah, let's wait. Let's wait till we get back to the conference room. I think there's a lot of questions. Here, so. Yeah, real quick. And yeah. Just, uh, <clears throat> Allison, I noticed there's a good question for you on here on the chat. Yeah, I see that. Um, but yes, uh, the question is, uh, did did my husband and I have experience in this industry before we launched out of the box? And and we did. Um, uh, Chad is our CEO and uh, head of engineering, and that's what he did. Uh, it, we actually met at work at a company that did something very similar to what we do now. And he was the engineering manager there. Uh, I was in uh, a sales role and then later a production role as well. So a um, little bit of different experience and different types of um, departments, but yes, in the same industry. It's really, really come a long ways. <clears throat> so that, that's amazing to see that whole thing. The, another question came up, Allison, I've got you here is what kind of planning system do you use? Um, a lot of people on this call are probably familiar with Impact Washington um, and some of the great services that they offer. And several years ago, um, we had the opportunity to work with Sarah Stewart at Impact Washington, and she really helped us to develop our own system. When we were originally looking at an AS9100 uh, certification, which is the aerospace uh, quality standard, um, 
because of our quick turn and prototyping services, we knew we couldn't just take, you know, kind of an off the shelf approach to meeting that standard. We wanted to be able to meet the standard, but meet it in a way that didn't feel like a wet blanket sitting on top of how we already did business. So she really helped us come up with a custom solution so that it didn't impact our core uh, competencies and services and still allowed us to meet those specifications. So we use, you know, um, right now a, a couple different systems. Obviously we have um, some very highly skilled Excel users uh, that have developed some custom tools for us, but we've also got an access database that helps us do some of our planning, which has been fantastic. Uh, and then of course, you know, QuickBooks, uh, MISIS for MRP planning, um, and actually, we've been working with another campus member, uh, Dan Koser at Koser uh, Engineering and Consulting to help us, you know, kind of figure out how to transfer some of these systems that we've been using as a small company and, and recreate them um, with a more of a single source solution as we continue to grow. Wow, that's... <laughs> well, thank you, Alice. I'm going to go ahead and turn the time back and there's some more questions popping up. but. Um, uh, you know, if you'd like to come off mute and ask some questions, or uh, you can type them into the chat either way. But first of all, that was a that was a great tour, and some of that machinery is really surprising. Mike, you mentioned that that it raises some eyebrows when they hear about some of the machinery you've got. Yeah, that's it's it's incredible what that machine can do. The parts counter alone, it saves uh, saves so much time, and it's very accurate. It takes all the um, all the work out of uh, questioning your ability to count components on a reel. <laughs> and uh, back, in the, back in the old day, there was a little reel counter and you would measure by the inch and uh, how many components per square or per inch on that tape, and which is very time consuming. You've got operator error. You've got people touching the components, which you don't want for static issues. And uh, this way, you just pop the bag or the reel in the machine like you saw and up pops the, the, the count. And uh, boy, it, it really it really does raise some eyebrows, especially with product development firms who are who have a store, you know, inside their facility and full of thousands of, of unique components. And instead of hiring extra people just to count um, components and put a kit together, we can do it in minutes. That's fantastic. Now, um, Scott uh, Huddleston made a really interesting observation. So his career was in Navy supply chain. And he said that sometimes these circuit boards, uh, you know, they they go out of whack. And you mentioned that on the tour that some people just, you know, they they need repair, they need replacement. Uh, you know, the machinery's still good. It's just that the uh, you know the circuit board gave out. And and Scott was observing that that you guys seem would seem very competitive in this space. I would say we're very competitive, especially you know with our with our ease of setup and the way that we have our planning system all set up. Uh, it, it doesn't take, but you know, a couple hours for a quote sometimes up to 24 hours. Um, you get that, you get that order in and all of our resources are within an arm's reach. We've uh, geared ourselves up to buy very smart and very fast. And so all of our manufacturing with our equipment being able to be set up in, you know, sometimes minutes, sometimes it only takes a few hours to set up a really tough job and be able to ship it out the door same day. Um, if all the product is here and we've got nothing to, to wait on, it really is impressive. I don't think that there's a lot of companies out there that can do what we do. So we've geared ourselves up and, you know, you, you speak to a lot of people around here who say, well, what, what do you really want? And, and what, what, what can we provide? And we really have built this organization to service anybody who needs something really fast or if anybody needs something built domestic and larger quantity, we've got the machinery and the whole setup and buying power to do it as well. Very good. Well, uh, you were going to show us some things, Brian. You said uh, you wanted to show some. Oh, I think it was more of the when I mentioned panelization. And we, you know, we know we've got some people that on the line that's very familiar with electronics, and some people that may not be. So some of the terminology like panelization. So you know, panel is, a panel is this. So th these are actually uh, 10 boards. They're the same identical boards. And one of the things I was mentioning is that, uh, you know, when you go to a board shop and you have these, these bare boards built, we outsource these. We don't build these in-house. In but uh, sometimes they will come single up, which means 
the board house, built them like this, and then they cut them out of the panel. And so now you don't have any rails uh, for or any way for the uh, the machines out there to grab the, the for the conveyor to grab the, the boards, which causes a big problem. Uh, you may also have components in the uh, in the way. For the conveyor when it goes down so you've got to come up with a different solution for that and that's where the uh, a, uh, 3d printer will come into play or uh, some other fixturing will, will come into play but this is also another thing where uh, not number one but this is a pretty common deal where um you know we will tell customers hey if you want to save money panelize it and we'll also help them do that now panelization is a little bit different for every for for a different cm because of the different platforms they may use so when we say panelize it, it's basically panelized for optimum performance out on the floor uh, for the equipment that we have. Now, Dr. Brian, it sounds like to me that you guys give a lot of advice to your customers because I'd imagine that uh, there's a, there's been changes and there continues to be changes and discoveries in this world of circuit board. Uh, so uh, can you give some examples of maybe some clients who came to you and you ended up giving them some better ideas? Um, yeah, I wish B-Ray was in here because they, uh, we have a, a technical sales manager and the team inside usually run into all those kind of things. But, um, well, I'll tell, I'll tell you one thing that, um, I didn't hit on the floor. Um, Tristan was at the, uh, 3D x-ray and, uh, one thing, uh, by using the tools that we have out there, like that 3D x-ray, we used to build wearables kind of like a Fitbit and there were, um, we, we built thousands of them at one point and then we shipped them out to the field. And then they all started coming back like three weeks later or whatever it was. And, you know, it's it, the customers, it's kind of like, uh, hey, you built it. What did you do wrong kind of thing? Well, you know, we bring it back. We'll take a look at it. And we use the tools out there to x-ray it. And what we found is that the, the little motor, the gyro that vibrates uh, to send messages and alert folks was sitting on the backside of a micro BGA, which is a very fine component. And so one of the traces that goes to the BGA was fracturing over time due to that vibration. So we were able to use our tools here, use our expertise and show the customer that, you know, wasn't us, it's kind of like your design. So if you move that to the other side or, or wherever you need to move it, um, just move it away from that component, uh, it's gonna fix your problem. And that's kind of what happened, problem solved. I think uh, some of the other things that we kind of run into, we do, we're flex, we can consider ourselves flex circuit experts. And so I've got, there's a flex circuit right here. This is kind of rigid flex. So um, it's flexible right here. Sometimes you're going to populate this kind of stuff, and it's a different animal too, right? It bounces around. So we will tell customers maybe a better way to panelize it, or we'll have to come up with solutions to be able to populate that. Um, and I think we can kind of add some value there for the customer. Uh, I, think, I think the big thing is when customers are running into problems and we can kind of help them uh, through our DFM process or design for manufacturability uh, to, uh, to solve, solve issues. Yeah, you know, I, I'm pretty, uh, I guess one of the themes that I heard running through this entire tour so far is you guys do a lot of problem solving. Yeah, Chad, Chad, the owner, and it trickles down. Um, he, he and Allison have uh, kind of amassed a uh, pretty, uh, pretty um, nice uh, staff, uh, with the exception of the two sales guys. But um, um, he, uh, he, he's been doing it since he's 18, I think. And so, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't know where these guys come up with these ideas. I think um, we go home and uh, we don't turn off. Um, Chad, back in the day when uh, we used to work uh, together years ago, um, he would go home and he would start building prototypes in his garage after working all day. So uh, I think with Chad doing, being hands-on uh, for the last 22, 24 years, whatever it is, and coming up with solutions, um, uh, he is a plethora of information and that trickles down to the rest of the team. Yeah, that, that company culture. In fact, could you, could you speak a little bit to your company culture? Just, I mean, you mentioned nice, nice friendly people, problem solvers. Uh, there's some other values that, I mean, working here versus other places you've worked. Well, first of all, uh, my direct, my, my direct boss is on the line. So I had to say some of those kind of things, but um, I think maybe if Allison's still on the line, um, maybe she could speak to that. But I think if you're looking from my point of view or an employee's point yeah. of view, um, like I said, um, I'll, I'll use an example. Chad and Allison are very good at, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're business owners. They, they got all the skin in the game, right? Uh, but they, yet they come to us and pull us around the table and say, hey, here's what we're thinking. Here's what we're thinking about a new building. Here's what we're thinking about a new piece of equipment. Here's why. You know, the, the 3D part or the uh, x-ray part counter is a prime example of that. 
Um, you know, I didn't even realize that was even out there or on the list. Chad comes back from Apex and, uh, you know, somebody had the conversation and I'm like, why, why would we buy that kind of a piece of equipment? What does it do? I went out there and looked at it and knew exactly why we bought it because it, it solved a huge problem for us. And it is a big time saver, which is a money saver. But Allison, you want to speak to? Sure, I can say um, we our, our core value is to provide uh, the highest level of experience and education in the electronics manufacturing industry. So we really try to not only provide um, opportunities for our team members to have input in the process, but also to have um, education, continuing education uh, in the in the process and in the industry, as well as participating in the industry in groups, such as camps. We've learned a lot from webinars and presentations from camps. Uh, there's other industry uh, associations that we participate in as well, and um, really encourage our management team to participate in, in board level uh, on those associations so that they can really have a, a seat at the table and an opportunity to learn and grow. That's really important to Chad and I. Um, and we can say that we've been, we've been really lucky uh, to be able to uh, steal some people that we know are really high performers that we've, he and I have met uh, throughout our different positions before we owned our, our company. So uh, Trump, Brian Trumbull and Mike, both people that Chad and I had worked with before, we knew that they were just top notch. And as soon as we had the opportunity to bring them on board, we snagged them. Uh, so we, we really, <laughs> we really put a lot of stock in our employees as well. <laughs> keeping it safe, keeping it real. You know, and I really appreciate that, Allison and, and uh, Mike and Brian. And I think that, um, you know, again, I, I saw some automated lean, you know, processes there, but has lean been part of your thinking and training as well? The answer is yes. And Allison has been the, um, you know, the velvet hammer there, so to speak. But, uh, you know, we, we could talk forever about all the kind of stuff that we do out there on the floor and what happens behind the scenes. But, um, yeah, I mean, I go out there all the time. If I'm gone for four days, I'll come out and I'll, something's been leaned out. Uh, something looks uh, organized. Something looks different. It, it, it's always ever changing out there. But, um, you know, the one thing Allison's, I think she's uh, five S'ing as well. Uh, as long as they keep it out there in the manufacturing floor and not in the offices, I'm fine with that. But Allison, you want to speak a little more to that? Should be? Yeah, um, five well. S to me, um, it, you really want to focus on the simple stuff to make impactful changes. Uh, one great example that we have in visual control, and I'll, I'll give you two quick examples. Um, you may have noticed uh, out on the manufacturing floor during the tour, all of our employees were wearing black uh, smocks or ESD jackets. Uh, when visitors come into our facility, they wear either lime green or blue jackets, of course, Seahawks colors, but uh, that's so that everybody knows that there is a visitor in, in the shop and on the shop floor. It's a visual control or a visual cue to our employees that there's someone out of the ordinary around. The other quick example that we have, another example of uh, visual control is our rack and kit tags. So every, uh, every rack of boards, every kit, every place that there's parts has a little tag on it. And if it's a aerospace job, a medical job, or an ITAR job, it has a different color associated with that tag. So an operator doesn't, they don't even have to know it's a military job and they don't even have to remember what yellow means, what pink means, or what blue means. They just have to know there is a different color there. There's something different about this job. I need to check my docs and make sure that I understand what's special about it so that they get all the information that they need. Wow. No, that's, <coughs> those are great examples. And I think that, um, like you said, there's so much thought and an improvement over time. But it looks like you guys are poised to take over the world a little bit. It's kind of like... Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I think the problem is we're going to tell everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, now, um, if there's if there's something that you could you know say to the marketplace out there, and you know reasons you know reasons to use out of the box manufacturing, uh, what 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 does the marketplace need to know about you? Well, we're here. We're nimble. Um, we've got all the quality processes in place to do to build a successful um, product for them. 
and uh, we're here for them to support them. And so like we've talked about with the DFM and the expertise, uh, it's all here. And so I, you know, I don't think that uh, we, there's much that we can't do here unless uh, the equipment doesn't have that capability. I think um, the inside uh, sales team, the uh, technical sales manager and his, his group are phenomenal. Uh, they're always there. We, we, keep, um, we keep track of metrics, uh, positive feedback, negative feedback, comments, whatever. And I have to tell you, I probably the majority of the, uh, the positive feedback we get is from the personnel inside and the answers that they get back in a timely manner uh, for our customers. We don't, we don't, we don't um, wait to respond to them. It's, it's not like a bunch of millennials work here. No offense, but uh, um, you know, we, they, they, they're on it. That's awesome. Gosh, that's great. So Allison, uh, we're gonna we're gonna close up here in a moment. But I want to make certain that you have a chance to say anything you'd like to us and to the marketplace, and then we'll stop the recording and we'll stay on for networking and you know informal questions afterwards. But uh, Allison, any last words for us? I just want to say thanks uh, to Kirk and Stacy and Parker and Jody, everybody at camps. Thanks to. Uh, Brian and Mike for your time. You guys put in a lot of effort to make sure that we uh, we had a great presentation for the camps group today and for all the members. So I really appreciate you guys and uh, looking forward to, you know, learning from somebody else and, and who else can do the next tour. Yeah, well, thank you for all of your time, energy and preparation. I'm going to stop the recording. And again, I, I highly encourage you to uh, get in touch with out of, the, out of the box manufacturing. Now your website address is a little different because it's the initials, right? So give yes. us, yeah, give us your website address and a telephone number where you can be reached. It's uh, www.obmfg.com and our phone number is 253-214-7448. That's great. Well, get a hold of these guys. You've seen some pretty amazing things and pretty amazing people. So thank you again. I'll, I'll stop the recording here and we'll, we'll stay on for more informal conversation. I wish we could uh, have your computer.